Let's head over to Kyiv now, where Anna Foster from our partners at the BBC is standing by. Anna, thanks for joining us again. Putin called off an assault of that steel facility in Mariupol in favor of a blockade yesterday, but there are reports that the plant was still being shelled. What more do we know? You're right, those reports have been coming through that in fact that onslaught against the steelworks has not stopped, as Vladimir Putin suggested yesterday that it might. I think what is key here is something that we've seen throughout this war so far, is that what Russia says and what it does are often two very different things. We know that their military aspirations to capture the capital here of Kyiv were not successful. We know that they set out to achieve far more than they have in the first two months of this war. So in fact, Vladimir Putin saying that he wanted to move more into a, a siege, a blockade of that steelworks, maybe something that was intended as a, as a message to the world as opposed to a, a description of what was actually happening on the ground there. But what we do know is that there are still civilians holed up in that steelworks, there are still fighters, wounded fighters, and at the moment there is very little prospect of them actually managing to escape from there. Oh, so many lives at stake there. And a Ukraine's military is saying that after several quiet nights, artillery fire around Kharkiv intensified this morning. Could that city be Russia's next focus? There has been a terrible string of stories that have come from that particular city in the northeast. Again, it is strategically important to Russia. It forms part of them trying to, to move onto the eastern flank of Ukraine and take more territory. I met one family earlier in this conflict who had fled that city, and they described to me how they'd hidden in the basement of a school for four weeks as that school was shelled repeatedly by Russian forces. Their son, Sasha, he spent his 11th birthday on a train, leaving his home, leaving his childhood friends behind. We know that that is a focus of Russia's interest. We know they want to try and take that city. And as we've been hearing, not just there, but right along this front line, Russian attacks are intensifying. And that is why Ukraine and President Zelensky have been pushing so hard for those weapons, weapons which, as you say, President Biden has promised to send as soon as possible and get to the front line where they're really desperately needed. These stories of children are, are particularly difficult to hear. And a Ukrainian president, Zelensky, says Russia had rejected a proposal for a truce this Sunday, which would be Orthodox Easter. Analysts say Russia may be trying to make big gains by May 9th. Can you talk about the significance of Victory Day? So Victory Day is a huge public holiday in Russia. It marks the defeat of Nazi Germany at the end of World War II. It is celebrated in most of Europe on the 8th of May, but in Russia they do it on the 9th, and it is a hugely important and symbolic day for them. You see big military parades, fireworks, and what we believe is that Vladimir Putin really wants to have some achievements to trumpet to the Russian people on that day. So I think a lot of military analysts and the Ukrainian government believe that over the next week or so he will throw everything that he has got left at this war at the Eastern Front. So on that vitally important day for Russia and for Russian national pride, he will have some sort of victory, some sort of success to show to his people. Anna, thank you so much.